stop me. Definitely on the screen, I think that's carte blanche. I can say it whenever I want to. Now, really, I do enjoy being with you all tonight. And thank you all for caring enough to be here. Uh, you're the ones that make the success of everything that we're going to do. And this is almost a career tonight. I think everybody's excited about uh, seeing this particular film. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we were doing in Congress and what we did this last year. Uh, because as chairman of the science committee, I get to sort of pick what we have hearings about. And this last year, we decided to have a hearing on something that's never been the subject of a hearing before, and that is dyslexia. And in order to get into it, we called it, of course, the science of dyslexia. Uh, that was actually the staff Jennifer Brown's idea, so I recognize her and give her uh, credit for that, too. And we, but we were going forward with this hearing, the science of dyslexia. Uh, and we were really, really worried. We didn't know if anyone was going to care about the subject. We didn't know if anyone was going to pay attention. We didn't know if anybody was going to show up. So we had this hearing, and you know what happens? It is standing room only. And we had 99 hearings in the last two years. This hearing on dyslexia got more likes on Facebook than any of the other 98 hearings. And so that's what we tapped into and that's what made us really. So we took a chance on having a hearing that no one's ever had a hearing on before and really supported that kind of interest and that kind of response. And we're going to keep at it. Uh, as we all know, there's not so much of a knowledge gap as an action gap. We kind of know what needs to be done. You want the early detection, you want to train the teachers, and you want to come up with strategies for success for the students as important as anything else. And what we've been doing, we've been talking to a lot of you all, to advocates uh, within the community, trying to find out and learn as much as we can so we can exchange ideas and sort of decide what the next step is going to be. So we're all in this together. We are looking to you all for ideas. Let us know what you think we can do. Now, the Dyslexia Caucus in Congress, I think we're up to 47 members. We hope to have a lot more. And this is where I can ask for your help tonight. Regrettably, you're not all constituents. And so, uh, in fact, most of you are not constituents, and I'm really happy about that in one sense, because what I'd like to ask you all to do, sort of as an action item tonight, is to contact your member of Congress and ask them to join the Dyslexia Caucus. And I'm one co-chair, the other co-chair is Julia Bromley from California, and whoever they want to contact is fine, but sign them up. And if we can sign them up, we can get them involved. If we get them involved, we'll be able to do uh, more in Congress and more on your behalf. And so, uh, anyway, appreciate your, your help on that. Uh, there's lots to do. And I love seeing all the young people here tonight. Uh, everything we do is for people who are between three and four feet tall. <laughs> That's why I take most of them tonight. And, uh, I mean, your heart goes out. And these are bright kids, they're alert. They're very active oftentimes, and uh, it's just nice to see so many here. I mean, I've had so many of this age in my life, and so much been disliked by other nieces, dyslexic, for example, uh, brother in law. And it's just fun to see what we can do as, as team members working together. And there is much to be done. As I say, more action than sometimes knowledge. I think we've got a lot of knowledge we can certainly build on that. And I've been traveling around my district, I've been in Austin to a couple of schools. We'll continue to do that and then look uh, for your idea. Now, tonight, this is still green, or is that not the Yeah, but we're going to do a workaround because I'm going to talk to everybody around. Okay, okay. In that case, I'll just stop working five minutes before everyone walks in. A special thanks to Harvey Hubbard. A really special thanks for putting this film together, uh, for letting us come tonight and showing it. And I'm hoping this might be something we might be able to uh, show in DC as well, the members, the staff members. Too. Now I'm going to brag on Harvey just for a second. We're all sort of a product of those who have gone before. And it so happens that Harvey's grandfather was the Hubble of the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, actually, if I can, 60 more seconds or not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to tell you about, to me, the most moving, the most inspirational photograph I've ever seen. And it was taken by the, Har by the Harvey Telescope. It was taken by the Hubble Telescope uh, several years ago. The scientist writing the Hubble Telescope decided to point at a dark speck of sky where nothing was thought to exist. This dark speck of sky was so small that if you held up a penny at arm's length, I wish I had a penny, uh, Abraham Lincoln's eye, which you can hardly
mark you see on the painting would cover that dark speck of sky. Again, nothing was thought to exist, totally void, totally black, nothing there. When they exposed the film in the camera on the Hubble, I think it was a total of 24 hours they exposed it over two weeks, three times, every time the Hubble came into alignment, they, uh, with that dark speck of sky, they exposed the film. When they developed the film in that speck of sky where nothing was thought to exist, there were 3,000 points of light. Each point of light is not a star, and each point of light is a galaxy consisting of an average of 200 billion stars. So in that speck of light, when nothing was thought to exist, two, what is that, 3,000 times 200 billion stars. The point of that story in part, other than that's why we explore and that's why we're happy for Harvey's grandfather to come up with the Hubble Space Telescope, but the point of that is a little bit related to us. Sometimes when things, uh, I'm gonna choke up when I say this, sometimes when things are, are dark and desolate or bleak, if you just look long enough, the light is always there. Thank you.